Are you ready? As you can see by the title, we really need to talk about this golden visa. And a lot of people are panicking. And they're like, oh my God, can I come to Portugal? Can I come? Can I not? Can I not? And I just want to make something extremely clear. Because today we're going to talk all about the golden visa and what the options are and what people have said and what people haven't said. And essentially, just remember one thing. If you want to come to Portugal, you can still come to Portugal. The main difference between the golden visa and all the other visas is that the golden visa, you don't have to live in Portugal. But the other visas, you have to live and reside here. Anyway, let's get into it. One thing you really need to remember from this whole video is that if you are interested in a golden visa, you need to act fast. It's ending. Okay, so let's draw a timeline here. So in October 2012, the Golden Visa program started and it went extremely well, really, really, really well. Went up to 2019, they made some minor adjustments. And then in 2022, there were some large adjustments because the majority, there's all different ways to get a Golden Visa, but the main reason people, or the main way people got into the Golden Visa scheme was through purchasing property, 90% of them to, to, to be exact. So in 2022, they limited the area where you could buy properties to get a golden visa. So they took away the Algarve, the majority of the Algarve. They took away Lisbon. They took away Porto. And only in the interior of the country could you, because the idea was to try and boost property purchases in the interior of the country. So now what has just recently been announced on the 16th of February 2023, that they're going to scrap the whole thing completely. So no one knows exactly what's going to happen. They're arguing in Parliament at the moment or discussing it at the moment. And then on the 16th of March, in a few days time, 2023, we're going to find out exactly what's going to happen. Now, we think that maybe it'll end in January 2024, which means that you've still got a gap. You've still got a period to be able to apply. We'll talk about that in a minute. So that's the basic timeline. In January 2022, when the restrictions came into play, you could still buy a property in commercial real estate, not residential real estate in the demarcated, in the sort of prohibited areas. So this was a loophole that popped up. And then a lot of companies and funds would go and buy distressed assets like old hotels and things like that, refurbish them and then sell them for a golden visa fund, basically. So there's the general rule was, you know, the general idea was basically you go and put 500,000 bucks into um, an apartment in a hotel and you could spend maybe seven, uh, seven days a year there if you're lucky or 14 days a year. And then after five or six years, you'd get the money back, they'd pay it back to you. And also during those four or five, six years, you would get anywhere between four or five percent back on your investment. So You'd get your passport, you'd get your money to be secured, and you'd get your money back. So it sounded like a really great deal. Um, but today, what we're going to do is spend time with a slightly different fund um, that is doing this. And, and they still have lots of options ready for you to go. And you'll be able to get it in just before the Golden Visa shuts off. So let's have a look, because it's a fantastic place. We're going to go and spend this incredible seafront spot. Let's go check it out. <music> This place is called Masana Algarve, and it's got 36 apartments, you know, one and two bedroom apartments, the 16 two bed villas. And it's designed to be a really cool community all centered around the pool. And obviously with a beach right close by, it's a pretty amazing spot. As you can probably see, they are refurbishing this. They bought it, they're refurbishing the whole development, and then they're gonna put it spanking new. So I'll show you a few architect shots after we just go around the development a little. Thank you. 
So what has the Golden Visa really done for the country? Well, I mean, if you take that massive surge in 2014 when it really started kicking off, and it provided a lot of press to the country. And obviously, you look at the statistics, like 11,500 people coming in, bringing 7 billion euros into the country. I mean, that's a massive investment over and above the norm. And I'm thinking, obviously, something like that, like an input like that is going to help the country. And all of a sudden, Portugal became the place to be. And I think that the Golden Visa may have played a role in, in advertising this fact and like sparking interest. And then people will be looking, oh, wow, and Portugal is so beautiful. And all the blogs and stuff and the Instagram accounts just started going crazy. And Portugal became really popular because... Back in 2010, no one knew where Portugal was. They really had to look it up on a map, you know, it was, it was weird. But um, so now Portugal's on the map. And if you look at the net results of the Golden Visa, it's, it's provided a lot of foreign direct investment. It's, um, it's really injected a lot of, and you think about it, like one person buying a house for, I don't know, half a million bucks. Um, you know, they've got a, they, they generally have a pool, so they need a pool cleaner. They generally have a garden, so they have a gardener. They generally need a cleaner, so they have a cleaner. So there's three people, three people's families, and 11,000 times by three, that's like, you know, 40,000 families already are um, benefiting from this. Then those people who have bought that house go out to local restaurants. They buy local food from the supermarkets. They obviously bought the house as well. They buy cars. They buy all associated stuff from the stores around. So it does have a knock-on effect on the economy, and you can see that it's been good for Portugal. It's not necessarily just the golden visa that impacted the Portuguese economy over the last 10 years, but the Portuguese economy has done, done pretty well. So as again, I'm not an economist. I'm just looking at the golden visa. And sure, the Baixa area of Lisbon has been radically affected by the golden visa and other you know, foreign nationals. And it's regenerated and gentrified the area completely. So it's actually cleaned it up and made it look beautiful. And sure, the prices have gone up radically, but... Should people really be living in the center of a city, not paying higher prices? I mean, that's not normal. If you look all the way around the world. Um, they call it sort of, can't remember exactly what the term was in, in geography, but it was there was, an, there was a convergence zone right in the middle of a city where there was the highest prices. That's why you had skyscrapers, because everybody had to go up, because that actually per square meter was the most expensive um, property in the whole city. Now, why should Lisbon be any different? Because Baixa is the center of the city. It should be more expensive. It's logical. Um, likewise, with the coastal areas, I mean, they're the most beautiful areas in the country. Obviously, with supply and demand and basic economics, that's beginning to become, become more expensive. So when people turn around and say, ah, oh, but it's unjust and like all these prices are going up. Sure, it's hard for people to, to have prices, but unfortunately, if you can't afford it, you have to move to a lower priced area. So hopefully these, these measures that the government are talking about right now and um, actually going to introduce will help alleviate the house, house crisis. But I think it's more of a macroeconomic thing from around the world. But as again, I'm not an expert. It's just my opinion. And you know what I'd love is if you guys jump into the comments and tell me your opinions, because I'm sure everybody's got a different view on this. Everyone's got personal circumstances which will be affected by this. So it's a big issue. So let's jump into the comments and have a, a nice, polite free-for-all. Shall we? <laughs> okay, now today what we did is uh, we jumped into the thick of things. So I went to visit a couple of properties that a fund was developing. So meet the team. Anthony. Responsible for investors at Vida. Yeah. Jessica. Doing sales at Vida Capital. Michael. Responsible for two projects for Nomad Capital. So essentially, they developed these projects, um, these two in the Algarve. One's called Masana, where we're at now, and then we're going to head over to Nomad Bay in a little bit. And they've also got projects up in Porto and all kinds of things. So you invest with them in their fund, you get a golden visa, and you get returns on your investment. But, but let me not mess this up. So I sat down with Anthony Selman, and we had a chat and an interview all about the golden visa and exactly what the fund does. Okay, so we, we're sitting here talking to Anthony from Nomad Bay. Actually, it's not Nomad Bay, it's Vita Capital, right? It's Vita Capital Partners. Okay, excellent. Um, and we wanted just to, to tell you guys a little bit about the history of the Golden Visa. So, obviously, with this momentous decision by the Prime Minister happening, when did it happen? The 16th of March, I think it was. The 16th of February. 16th of yeah. February, sorry. Um, so, we're now... We're waiting for him to come back and clarify. So what's the actual status right now? Because obviously your whole business is golden visas, right? Yeah. So the announcement obviously came as a surprise to us, um, as, as to many. The status is as follows. The Prime Minister made a proposal 
We believe that on the 16th of March there will be clarification of the proposal by the Parliament and then it will be known whether the, uh, how much time we have left for the Golden Visa. Okay. Um, and what do you think, like right now, what do we know? We, we know that it's going to be scrapped, right? We know the Golden Visa is coming to an end, so, but we so don't know whether it's going to be a, a fund or real estate option. Yeah, so the way it works from Euro the European uh, Union level, there's been a lot of pressure to phase out the Golden Visas, the same in Portugal. Um, the way it will work is that people that have invested into the visa will remain invested. This is actually protected by the constitution of Portugal. This is a very important point because a lot of people have actually asked me and said, oh, will, my, you know, will my investment be protected? And yes, that's great. And then what will um, effectively happen is remains to be seen on the 16th of March. So we will not know whether direct real estate or funds will, be, uh, will, will still remain as an option. I think the general understanding is that from the 16th of March, we'll have a certain period for people to invest in the Golden Visa scheme and see it through. And from what I've heard, it's going to be most likely going to be sort of maybe January 2024 that the Golden Visa will run until then and then it will be cut off, right? This is what we've heard as well. So okay. we think until January, people have a chance to go into the Golden Visa. They will, mind you, they will need a couple of months to get in, to go through KYC. The fastest we see now is about like a month to get so through the process. Let's know your customer. There are certain steps that you need to go through in order to be able to approve for a Golden Visa. Right. Okay. So that's sort of due diligence to stop any kind of... Illegal stuff. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that was a concern in the Golden Visa program. So, um, if we look at the history of the Golden Visa, like you know, go back to 2012 when it 2012, started. 2012. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, how do you think it's impacted the country? We think you now we're a Golden Visa fund. We think it has been a tremendous positive impact for the country. There's obviously been a lot of investment, not just in real estate, but also in companies. Mm -hmm. So Portugal has received literally billions of investment from foreigners that have added to the, not just by investing, but added to the society as a whole. Because I mean, if we look at it from a macro level, I think you know, at that time, just 2011, 2012, we were coming out of the great financial crisis. We had austerity in process here, and it was really, everything was really bad economically. And then this stimulus came along and it maybe helped in other areas as well. Do you think there was a spin-off from it? We believe it helped. Uh, the, the best example is always Baisha in Lisbon, no, where an entire neighborhood was rebuilt into you know, a modern, type of neighborhood and it works really well now. Mm -hmm. um, it also has been a great success in other places, no? around Algarve, in Porto. We have a project now in Porto, which is uh, an example of how a Golden Visa investment can work. It's basically an older building being refurbished and mm -hmm. adding a lot to the community there. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, like refurbishing the country is, is, is a fantastic way of using it. I think a lot of people, some people look at the Golden Visa a little bit negatively. So what, do you, what did you say to those people? We say, we say to those people, it's quite simple. It's an investment in the country. It brings the country forward. And it's not only an investment in the country. It's an investment for the investor itself. No? Mm -hmm. There's a return paid by funds like ours, like Vita Capital. So it's, it's just an option there for, to invest, which adds a lot to a certain, uh, a certain environment uh, to the country. Yeah, I mean, I personally think it's a really positive thing for the country. Um, now, there was an interesting threshold that happened in January of, of 2022, right? When we... They shrunk the areas for the Golden Visa. And then yeah. it gave rise to this thing called the touristic development. So what, is, what are those? So what happened in 2022 was like there was a similar, um, if you will, a movement in the country where people started to ask questions about the Golden Visa. There was a lot of investment coming into the country. Some people had questions about it. So what the government did is they adjusted the rules for the Golden Visa. The limit for investment was increased to 500,000 euros. And the type of property that people could invest in was also uh, changed. Mm -hmm. They made a distinction between the very popular areas of, say, Porto, Lisbon, the Algarve, and made a rule where they said you can only invest into commercial property in those areas. So that's what happens. And out of that, there's been a trend for um, investors to invest in hospitality property. There's other commercial property as well. There's retail, there's obviously offices, but hospitality was easier, I think, to understand for most investors and also available mm -hmm. in, these, in these markets. We're doing the same. So we invest in hospitality property, say an older hotel, and then we turn so, it into branded residences. Okay, so you grab a hotel and you, you re renovate it into a branded residence so people then can buy their own apartment, right? And following the new rules, the rules from a year ago, we're then allowed to sell those as Golden Visa properties to, uh, to investors. Okay, then in then our then case, we sell to the wider markets. We sell to any international or, net or local buyer mm -hmm. because we have the branded residence edge uh, to, the, to the property. Okay. Um, and Anthony, I'd love to hear a little bit about, I mean, we, you know, we've, we've visited this morning, we visited um, Masana near Albufeira 
And we're now here in Nomad Bay. You can see the, the sign up there. And we're going to have a look around and, and show you this. Can you tell us a little bit about these two products? Or, or so, branded residence, it's not a product. So. Thank you. So what we do is we take these older hospitality properties and we reposition them, we rebrand them. And we try to do this with the best, in the best possible way that we believe serves like a type of uh, clients that is looking for more than just say, uh, you know, your typical golf resort residence where you go to retire, but it's much more than that. It's like a place where you can work, where you can take your family. A lot of our clients are young families, uh, where you can spend time, where you can invite your friends, invite your family. So these are really residences for people from outside that want to feel at home for a while um, in a, in a beautiful place. Like for instance, the Algarve here, where we have Masana and here at Nomad Bay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just a just a, an investment to get a passport. It's more than that, right? I think there's two things here. For our investors, clearly it's an investment where they can apply for a passport. Mm -hmm. but, but they know that with us, with our branded residences, they know that we get the return that they're looking for mm -hmm. by catering to these type of, uh, of of clients that come and stay with us. Excellent. Well, yeah, Anthony, thanks so much. We appreciate it. it nice Thank to meet you, Nick. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So if you're interested in this fund and you're interested in getting a golden visa before the time runs out, you've got to move quickly. So get in touch with us on algarvedics.com forward slash Vida. We'll introduce you straight away to Anthony and his team and they'll tell you all about this investment and so how it can benefit you, etc, etc. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll play you out with some scenes from Nomad Bay. 74 high-end apartments with outstanding views ranging from one to three bedrooms just east of Cavuero, which is a fantastic spot because I know I lived there for four years. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Gov addicts.com